is a journey into sound. A journey which will bring to you new color, new dimension, new values, and a new experience. 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 When Bowie says play on these two chords, I actually, the first take was a blues solo that I played. And he said, no, that's too commonplace. He said, try another one. So this direct of A and G, I had played Latin music, so I played one of these kind of things. He said, that's yeah. pretty He said, that's too normal. He said, didn't you play on the avant-garde jazz scene in New York? I said, well, I played some of that crazy shit, but you don't want that. That's why I'm not working Saturday night. <laughs> that's, why I'm, that's why I'm poor and broken and hungry. <laughs> that's why I'm poor and fucking broke. But anyway, I, I, I played one take where I was doing all this kind of stuff, you know, and, and he said, that's it. Wow. That just reinforces the genius of him. But I read a quote from David. He was talking about just creativity and like the space you want to be in as an artist. And he made this analogy of being in the ocean and getting to that point in the water where your feet can barely touch the ground. So you're right at that point where you're about to drown, but you're still in control enough to keep yourself from drowning, like that edge. And I thought it was always the best way to describe where you want to be. You're just on the edge of maintaining control, but close enough to allow the possibility <laughs> of death. In that uh, yeah. he, he was ruthless that way as an artist, and he never, um, he never wavered. I'll tell you something. We finished touring around 2004. We, we had done 113 shows. We were on the road for 13 months. We had another 20, 30 shows, but he got a, had a heart attack in Germany in the middle of the show. So we had, a, you know, we, we managed to get through the show, but we missed the rest of the tour. And it was very, very sad because uh, of the pain he went through and the fact that as a band we were going out to do all the big festivals in, in Denmark and 80,000 people, we lost all that. So anyway, uh, after he healed, about a year or two later, uh, he was scared to go out and play. So he said, can you do a few shows with me, just piano and voice? So we did something, an AIDS benefit. I played with him and Alicia Keys. We did changes, you know. Uh, we did all that shit. And it was great. And then a few months later, he writes. He said, Mike, do you think we should go out and tour again? And I said to him, only if you're hearing it and you really feel it. And guess what? He listened to me and he didn't go out on tour. My wife was so pissed at me because I was out of work already and I wanted to go out. But I, I just couldn't put that pressure on him. That's not what music is about. And I could tell in his heart of hearts because when you're a pianist for a singer, you're connected telepathically and all this kind of stuff. You feel everything. When he was having his heart attack, I could feel it in my fingers on the, uh, on the piano because you're connected. And I could feel he did not want to tour. He did not want to tour. And that was the last tour. So, I mean, I did his... Yeah, and thank God he listened to you, man, because I had the same sort of dynamic with Michael Hutchins. And it was right before, you know, he died. And he, we all knew he did not want to go back and do that tour. You know, and it's, it's sort of like, you know, like the goose that laid the golden egg syndrome. You know what I mean? And it's when the people that are the closest to whoever that may be, most of the time they're the least equipped to be able to really be there for them because they're too vested in the decision. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing, you know, you, you, you did that. Like, I, I tried, I mean, we told him, you know, don't go, you don't have, no, I gotta, you know, cause I wasn't in a band with him. I was sort of doing a side thing, but you can look at pretty much all the people that didn't make it through. And that dynamic is always in the equation. And it's not necessarily malicious, no. but if, you know, it's just people's so own self-interest. They get on that rat wheel of having a career and, they lose sight sometimes of that this is still a person. This is a human being. Mm -hmm.